Power Penny days are back, just in time for spring at JCPenney. Stock up on wardrobe staples to home essentials, like tees for the family, select styles starting at $7. Soak up the savings with $5 Home Expressions quick dry bath towels in an array of colors. Or use your coupon to save an extra 25% store wide. Incredible prices, spectacular savings. Hurry and Sunday. JCPenney offers in coupon valid 324 to 327. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Power Penny deals excluded from the coupon. The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, the number one free-to-play gaming podcast in the world. I guess I can't really say that anymore since we are yeah, branching we were out to by the enemy. What enemy is that? We're now the number two. Never mind. My name's Jeff. No. That's Scott. Hey, and I'm Mark. And uh, I'll go ahead and do this because Scott doesn't know how to welcome people in. Uh this week we were reviewing a game called Ocean's Heart. And we have the pleasure of actually being uh, joined by its sole creator and developer. I believe that's true, that he did everything in this game. Uh, this is Max. Uh, do you, howdy, howdy. you say your last name? Because it says it on the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Max Mraz. Yeah, and uh, he It's like recent- Jason Mraz, but with a Max. Yeah. That's the easiest way to remember yeah, it. That's how I remember it. Uh, and he recently just released his game, Ocean's Heart. On the Switch, you can get it now. It's, of course, also available for PC, and uh, we had the pleasure of reviewing it this week. And this is episode number 108, by the way. There you go. See, so, Jeff, you, you took over for I Scott. I did. I'm sorry. You, you go ahead, Scott. I threw everyone you, off. By you kind of you <laughs> kind of took over for Mark, too, because you just kind of like put Listen, everything out there about the game. Mark, I was what go- was this week's game? This week, we played... A free to play game. No, we didn't. Blah blah blah, and it okay. was released in blah blah blah. All right, so Mark, yeah. you know you two can sign off. I got this. I got you. No, listen, I'm I'm here just for commentary. All right, which means he hated the game. All right, bro. Let's no, <laughs> <laughs> don't put words in my mouth. I can already feel Max uh, and his regret. All right. No, um, I do. I do really respect you inviting developers onto your show just to drag them. I think that's a creative. That's thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people are doing that these days. Uh, jokes on you. We actually love the game. Thank you oh, for shit. letting us. Play. All right. So, so I'll get started and um, just real quick to to run the game down. It is very much, and I don't think I'm going to surprise anyone by saying it's inspired by the Legend of Zelda. Um, would that be fair, Max? Absolutely. Uh, it kind of looks, it, it definitely has that 16 bit vibe uh, using uh, great pixel art. Now, you did the Thanks. pixel art on this game. Yep, I did uh, all the things, everything. Yeah. You did the music. Yep. You Got made the sound already. effects. Mm hmm. Some of them, even with my mouth. And <laughs> did you do the art? <laughs> Is that all he did with his mouth? Oh, God. <laughs> The, uh, go the ahead. one piece of yeah, that one piece of promo art that's the cover. I didn't draw that. That the that my publisher hired someone out to do the box art. Right. And so um that's pretty impressive to to make a game by yourself. Uh, how long is this how long did well, it thanks. take from like when you first did I don't know, make place the first pick I've never made a game. Place the first pixel. <laughs> to when it released in 1.0 on steam uh yeah so 
Um, when I started out, I didn't know how to make a video game either or how to code. Um, it was, I want to say, early 2017. I was like, yeah, I'm in my mid-late 20s. It's time to start learning how to code, probably. Figured I'd make a video game to do that, I guess. So I think it overall took five years, approximately. Um, which I think is a pretty long time, but uh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even know basic, basic things like what is a function. Yeah, yeah, but that was all self-taught too, right? Uh, yeah, primarily. Yeah, I was making the video game for a while. Um, it, for a year or two. Um, and then I went to a coding school because I had been working at a Denny's. Uh, and I needed to get my life together. <laughs> and I figured I should. Uh, since that was going pretty well with the video game. It's funny you mentioned that. I get my life know. together when I order a Grand Slam, so. Mm, but do you get your <sighs> balance Denny's together jokes. later? People come um, here for the Denny's jokes. <laughs> anyway, People I'm sorry. This Denny's park, parking lot because I invited him here to throw down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess uh, short answer is like five-ish years from yeah. start to finish-ish. And... um. This is, I don't think this is your first go around though, right? You've had some smaller, maybe games I saw on itch.io or itch.io or however you say it. Oh yeah. So that's actually a common misconception. Um, so what had happened was I put, I made Ocean's Heart and that was the first game I'd uh, ever really worked on, um, outside of like, you know, some RPG maker projects when I was a kid. Um, and I got to like the you know, like the game was playable start to finish. You might call it like maybe beta stage. Um, there was still some stuff to tweak and polish for sure. But uh, I was at like at a stopping place and I wanted to find a publisher and work with them to go through that whole process of like actually getting it out there. Um, so while I was looking for a publisher and sending out pitches and stuff on my off time, I decided to make more games. Um, so that was where those small itch.io projects came from. Um, okay. So one of them I did was, it's called Yarn Town, and it was basically like a, a 2D make of Bloodborne. Um, and that wa- and that and a lot of people really liked that, and a lot of people played it, which was really cool. Um, What's the name very of it again? Unexpected. Uh, it's called Yarn, Yarn Town. Yarn Town. Yeah. I've just wanted so, to repeat it, so if people are listening and they want to find it, they know what to look for. Oh, yeah. It's called Yarn Town. Get it Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We've said it three times now. I think um, that's what they say for marketing. So what does that invoke when we say it three times? Mm-hmm. Candyman. Michael um, Keaton. Virtually the same person. So, Whoa, no. um, Nope. What's your relationship with, like, Zelda, Legend, uh, you know, uh, Link to the Past is the one that this reminds me the most of. Why mm-hmm. a Zelda-style game? So, like, Zelda's long been my favorite series of games, uh, just because, like, the the way that those games put exploration and the way they put exploration in the forefront, um, like, resonates with me the most out of, like, all the sort of kinds of video games you can have. Because um, I like exploring in real life. Um, I like poking around the woods and seeing what kind of weird fallen down houses are in there. Um, I would love if I found a sword in one. I usually don't. <laughs> this, but so like, like old man in there here, you're gonna need this. <laughs> I would have other questions. <laughs> yeah, that is the mo- like honestly the most threatening statement you can make. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need this. Um, yeah. So I've I've always loved the games, and I figured like for my first game, I didn't want to reinvent wheels when I didn't know the first thing about building wheels. I figured I should stick with a thing that I know works and that I really love um, mm-hmm. and see if I could make a good go at that. So, uh, yeah, it, it reminds a lot of people of Link to the Past. Um, it, it, I was going for, uh, I think, uh, the Zelda that like stuck with me the most was Oracle of Seasons. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, there's definitely influence from all kinds of those games and you know, obviously other places, too, but. It was, it's, it's funny that you mention exploring because mm-hmm. I ended up exploring far more than I actually did the story at first. So by the time I got to actual boss fights, I had so many hearts and was like so tanky that it was like, 
Oh, <laughs> was this what, what I was supposed to do in the whole time? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. along there are some differences here. Um, I mean, the main mechanics of walking around, slashing your blade, having bombs, and, and various things you see in Zelda are all here. Um, there are something that I found a little different was a quest system that actually kept me on task. Um, <laughs> saying, <laughs> here's what you need to be doing. Because games like Zelda, they don't have, at least the, the, the classics, they don't have that sort of quest log. And so a lot of times when I boot up an old Zelda game, all right, where, what have I done last and where do I need to go? Um, so mm -hmm. I did appreciate that it does have a quest log, but it also has a side quest um, that you can do to gain money and that money can be spent on upgrading your gear. Um, and so the RPG elements are light here in the sense that it's not like decks and, uh, you know, that's yeah. the only thing I know from RPGs is dexterity. Are there other Charisma. stats? Charisma. Dex, int, uh, strength. Everybody's sleeping on charisma. Charisma, yeah. <laughs> then there's vitality. There you go. Well, they have vitality. Well, I should say they. Max put vitality in this game because it would be quite weird if you didn't have any at all. Um, along the way, you're collecting oh, well, food that you sure. can eat to restore health. I, there, I did not finish. Sorry, Max. Uh, <laughs> the game, but there is a crafting sort of systemish. Yeah. Potion crafting. There. Thank you. Yeah, you can um, make, uh, like, different potions. You can make, uh, there's, like, I think three different kinds of consumable weapons you can make, be they, like, weird bombs or eyeballs that bounce around the room and hit enemies. Uh, and your usual one. dungeons and caves. And, I mean, you already know, like, if you hear, it's like The Legend of Zelda, whether you're in or out. Pretty um, much. Now, Scott, you beat the game, right? Yes, I did complete the game the primary quests i am missing i believe two side quests i looked them up online mm -hmm. after i beat the game because i was actually missing two spells that i never picked up and so yeah i finished the game completely on that part of it but i am still missing two of the spells which i uh, believe if i remember correctly one of them is the glades if i remember there's like three of them that you're supposed to, supposed to defeat there, mm -hmm. the monsters in there, and I haven't done that one yet. I've only gotten to two of the glades. I don't know the other one. And then the lighthouse uh, quest line, I haven't finished that one yet either. Nice. Yeah, well, you're pretty much there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Max, oh, so let, me, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. How... how... I'm. I imagine you played the the Demon Souls and Dark Souls and Bloodborne games. Yeah. Wait, how much influence did those games have on this game? Uh, it's because I noticed that the difficulty level in this game uh, gets gets pretty top notch. You know, as as you progress along. Oh, thanks. And I, you know, and I felt I felt myself uh, having a a a tough a tough go of things uh when when i got you know comfortable playing the game and and you know that's a that's a testament to the difficulty level so what did did did, did those games have any influence on on your creation in this game and uh just kind of go over what what influences in the difficulty level did you have before this game was released and then has it has it met you know what you expected <laughs> yeah so uh, it's it's i was definitely influenced by from soft's um uh, my little sister got me into bloodborne Ooh. uh Ooh -hoo -hoo. oh i brought the big words guys don't you worry um Oeuvre. i'm gonna use that on wordle i hope it's enough letters it's not I don't, okay thank it, you you have to be five right <laughs> <laughs> anyway so yeah i don't know my sister got me into bloodborne and i um Really loved it. I would I I hadn't played it for the longest time because I'm like, oh, it's a hard game. I'm not going to enjoy that. Uh, but I didn't really. Th I I thought it was not really as bad as I was dreading ahead of time. Like it's definitely got tough stuff. Um, and I enjoyed that. But the thing that really got me in with the FromSoft games is uh, the way they tell their stories and how open ended they are. Uh, I really loved that. So I played Bloodborne, and then I was like, what did I just play? And then I watched all the youtube videos about it and i had a great time um and then my sister convinced me to keep going with the other from soft games um 
to the point. I just platinum Sekiro before Elden Ring came out, and now I'm on that, like everyone else is. But um, the difficulty I actually wasn't necessarily going for anything akin to what FromSoft is known for. I wanted it to be like, oh, you're gonna have to actually pay attention and you know get some hits in, get some dodges off, rather than just blindly hacking away. Um, but I also like. I also like when games are very forgiving um, and respectful of the player's time. That was a big tenant that I had was I, I wanted it to be that you could not easily steamroll all the enemies all the time. But if you did die, eh, it's not a big deal. It's just a little bit of a setback because you've probably got other games you want to play. And I think yeah. especially <laughs> as a, uh, you know, an indie developer making their first game, you kind of have to be aware of that, that um, it's, not likely that your audience is going to give you the benefit of the doubt as much as they would um, with something that they already knew, be it that a pre-established franchise or a developer they were already familiar with or a bajillion dollar marketing campaign to get them familiar with it before they play. So with me doing all the exploring ahead of time, because I couldn't, for some reason I couldn't find where I had to go next, even though I had the quest, I was like, couldn't find the area. But I did so much exploring, I ended up getting a bunch of hearts, a, a bunch of coral to be able to upgrade my weapons, and so much other things. Like, I, I had probably, I want to say, like, 12 hearts by the time I even got the, the, the bow, <laughs> which the bow is a major thing in this game. And so, I, whenever I was, when I finally went back to the main quest line, I steamrolled every single boss that i came across and i was like is this even a boss fight is this a normal <laughs> enemy or yeah. but and i noticed and i don't know if this was on purpose just in case somebody didn't find enough of them but i ended up with i want to say either two or four extra corals that couldn't be used to upgrade anything with <laughs> uh yeah that was that was not on purpose that's me <laughs> not being able to count actually <laughs> i yeah, because like my my sword and my bow is maxed maxed up to the like it can't be ma uh, like upgraded anymore. Because every time I go to like a, a smith, they're like, "Nope, you're at the the max of that." And I'm like, "What am I supposed to do with this extra <laughs> coral?" Yeah, you can use a couple of them on bombs, but you might have already done that. But yeah, no, the th what had happened was I I uh, I hid all the collectibles so well that I couldn't find them, <laughs> and I was going through like, oh wait, okay, okay, so divide, you know, divided, but you've got four weapons and you can upgrade them this many times, so you need you know like X amount of coral to upgrade everything. But how much coral do I have? <laughs> I totally lost track of it, so um, I just made sure there was enough. And then a little bit more just to be safe. Because the other, <laughs> the other thing, too, is like you, you don't, you, you know, you want your players to be able to if, you know, if they want the game to to be easier to be able to keep upgrading their weapons, um, even if they can't necessarily find every single hidden object or side quest, yeah. sort of like the um, like the like the Koroks in Breath of the Wild. Like there's these little hidden dudes that give you um oops bonk my microphone these little hidden dudes that give you seeds and there's 900 of them in the game and more than 300 or 400 is absolutely useless but they just counted on the fact that like players are gonna find them as they go and find a few of them maybe not all of them so I was kind of leaning into that uh but also kind of just uh, uh learning a valuable lesson about keeping track of the collectibles in a video game. I think definitely having the surplus is the right side to err on, uh, as opposed to being <laughs> short. Because <laughs> then, like me, I'd be wandering around the map forever. Where the hell is it? <laughs> um, Where's that I, last upgrade item? <laughs> I, I have a question that actually has kind of always fascinated me. Um, your game on, on Steam has achievements. And I've always kind of wondered, uh, from a programming and development side, how do you get this third party software to recognize something that you've done in the game um, to be able to trigger an achievement. Let's see. Let's see. So like it, the basic version of it is you go to steam uh, and you download a library, you download a file, like a, a package of code. Um, and you just sort of plop that library next to your game, you know, with, with somewhere where your game can access. And then when 
within you within your game let's say you've just beaten a boss and you want an achievement for that um you have you either write or find code online where someone's written a sort of adapter to interface between your language and that steam library and pretty much just say like hey steam library update an achievement called this with this value and send that online um and then it uh it sort of handles that for you it works it's it's just an api basically if okay you know what that is but roughly um <laughs> <laughs> my brain is already smoking just a little bit um from what you've said i think i asked a question that's too deep for me to even understand <laughs> um yeah basically basically I, the game just has a special steam file that says hey can you unlock this achievement and the steam file says yes sir right away i'll go on the internet and do that for you since it's uh gone to switch how well has it done compared to it being on steam um i think it's doing pre- uh, uh i think it's doing about what we expected <laughs> part of the uh part of the division of labor between like the developer me and the publisher um my, who my publisher is my publisher that was a thompson uh um, yeah nord current lab <laughs> <laughs> yeah nord current it handles um all of nord current by handling the distribution they handle all of the like keeping seeing the numbers and uh keeping track of how sales are doing etc cetera, etc cetera. um if i wanted to i could totally be texting a guy there every day and being like hey how are sales today but uh <laughs> i just want to make the games so yeah. uh you know every uh, when the game came came out i would message him on skype or whatever you know every week or every couple weeks uh, and then it's after a while it goes down to every you know i'll check in once a month or every three months or every quarter when i get my statement <laughs> so i don't actually even know is my point <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> any plans to get it on any other platforms like xbox or playstation uh definitely nothing concrete it's uh i've been poking around a little bit with xbox um but i've also been poking around with making more games and that is a little bit more fascinating to me so (laughs) it's gotten more of my attention so uh now uh, this clearly again has that inspired by zelda look is there anything other games or series that you look at and you're like i want to do that now Oh, yeah. I mean, every <laughs> I feel like every time I play a different game, I'm like, oh, wow, this is so good. I should do I want to do this. <laughs> so what like, was the last one? Um, well, I'm playing Elden Ring. Uh, you know, that's my thing right now. Like it is for tons of people and like loving it. And I'm sort of like, oh, my gosh, it's like the way they've got these three different kinds of you've got catacombs and caves and uh, other kinds of like there's this sort of systematized, but everyone's unique. I really like the way they're doing their open world. And I'm getting excited about that. And I'm like, oh, how could I apply a more complex stat system to weapons? This is really cool. Can I inflict elemental damage in weapons? Um, before that, I played Night in the Woods, which is very different. Totally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. Jumping on power lines. I want a mini game where you play bass guitar. Bass guitar is rad. <laughs> Those are definitely two ends of the spectrum there. <laughs> so wait, you're actually playing a newer game right now? Because uh, last I heard on Gaming Nexus, you uh, don't usually jump into newer games. Dude, yeah. So this is literally the first time I've ever played a game even close to its release. And it's kind of fun because all my coworkers are <laughs> playing it too. Yeah. It's like talking to people you're getting about in on that hype. fun. Who would have thought? <laughs> Hey gamers, have you ever thought of streaming? If so, then I've got something for you. I'm talking about Melon. Melon allows you to make high quality professional live streams in under 15 seconds. You can stream independently to any of the streaming platforms or invite guests to your show with one click. There are no complicated signups and no downloads needed for you or your guests. Melon is for everyone who creates video content, whether you stream live or record productions and upload them later. Melon comes with tons of customization options to help your brand stand out and allows you to earn an income while you stream via donations. It's the fastest growing live streaming product, and right now it's running an incredible deal on its premium features. Features like going live in five clicks, multi-stream, go live on Facebook, on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all at the same time, and grow your reach. Full HD, 
1080p camera resolution and streaming output. Unlimited customization. Upload your own overlays, backgrounds, and brand colors. Donations. You can earn an income during your live shows and Melon takes 0% of the fees. If you're interested in this, just head on over to melonapp.com slash arcade. That's melon, M-E-L-O-N-A-P-P dot com slash arcade, A-R-C-A-D-E, to get started for free today. Power Penny days are back, just in time for spring at JCPenney. Stock up on wardrobe staples to home essentials, like teased for the family, select styles starting at $7. Soak up the savings with $5 home expressions, quick dry bath towels, and an array of colors. Or use your coupon to save an extra 25% store wide. Incredible prices, spectacular savings. Hurry and Sunday. JCPenney offers in coupon valid 324 to 327. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Power Penny deals excluded from coupon. Because that's what we're I doing. I think Mark fell asleep. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> uh, we should mention that Mark was remarking on the difficulty. Mark has said on previous episodes, he's not one for games that have a lot of difficulty. No. It, th- don't, don't, Mark. <laughs> it's no, okay. We no, love you. No, you're not, not going to throw me under the bus this week. All right? <laughs> um, the game, Next week, then. This week. Next week, yeah, sure. But not while Max is here. Uh, Behave, the. Kids. The the game difficulty, I didn't find it like super overwhelming. It's just I'm I'm documented here on the podcast that you know as long as games challenge me, I'm okay with it. I'm not a I am not a from software guy. Um, I I, I just I don't enjoy those games just simply More of a, because a Lego guy, Lego Batman. <laughs> you know, I'm, hey, Lego I'm, I'm more awesome. of a, an explorer guy, which yeah. I haven't played Elden Ring, and I'm excited to dive into that. Is because it kind of blends everything together. But i i didn't I don't enjoy the difficulty in the front software games, is because it almost takes advantage of the gamer and their anticipation of what to expect, and so. You know, when I started running into difficulty with this game, it just reminded me of, hey, uh, you know, these other games that I asked Max about, uh, you know, inspiration of, they also were difficult to an extent, but it provided enough for the gamer to do to keep them entertained and engaged. And I appreciate Max saying that he he also looks at, you know, the the gamer's interest and in saying that, hey, you know, there's other games that you could be playing. And so we're not trying to make this game so super difficult. Um, and, and so I, I appreciate that answer from him. But uh, no, the, the game, the game is, I think, appropriately difficult and it does allow you to get into it. It does allow you the exploration, but also presents the difficulty that says, hey, this is not just going to be you steamrolling everybody in the game on your way to the to the, to the finish. So um, I, I didn't finish the game, but I will finish the game is because it does provide a, a, a pretty unique... Uh, like middle ground to where it's entertaining. I'm engaged in the story and I really appreciated all the dialogue in this game. It's because (laughs) it wasn't your traditional, uh, you know, Nintendo dialogue. It, it, it's kind of, it's kind of edgy dialogue. And I, I appreciated (laughs) that, you know, from, from you, Max. And so, um, that, that had me excited to 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 talk to people. It's like I was like, oh, okay, I got a little little edge to this dialogue bubble here. Let me go talk to this next person. Um, so yeah, there was I, some nerdy jokes in there too. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, and and see that that's that's the stuff that goes that gets undersold in in indie games is that there's there's direct influence over every aspect, including the dialogue or you mm-hmm. know um, story. That is told, and I just I appreciated the the fact that it wasn't just your 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 typical dialogue 
Um, and I, w- I will be finishing the game. It's just, you know, it's going to take me a little bit to get there. Yeah. We'll get Mark into indie games yet. He tends to make fun of me. Don't, don't label me. At, well, and he also says that pixel art looks unfinished to him. No, nobody. Listen, I'm not. This, that's not a conversation for this podcast. Like we've already gone over, get, hit the back catalog for that argument. Yeah. I'm a big fan of pixel art, and as someone who's tried at least a little bit uh, to do any at all, um, how, how did you take to pixel art and, and and making it, and how long did it take you to get good? <laughs> uh so that one i've actually been doing for a did we lose mac kind of been oh, doing that for is. a minute oh yeah i'm here um i've kind of been doing that one for a minute so in okay. when i would when i so like back in maybe middle school i heard about rpg maker which to anyone who's not familiar is uh, a computer program that gives you a point and click interface point and click drag and drop click on things to script a final fantasy style game uh like final fantasy maybe six or five or something uh i don't know i've not actually played any of those but i know that's what it's like um and i thought this was super neat because i was like well you can make a video game on your computer that's tight um <laughs> and i was like i'm gonna make a zelda game because that's the one i like um but it's absolutely not what this program is for it's called rpg maker because it's for making rpgs not zelda games uh but so i fought against that and that's when i like started to learn how to do pixel art basically just by uh, making little edits to uh, tiles ripped from pre-existing games. So uh, this is like probably how most people get into pixel art. Uh, definitely how everyone who I've, who, you know, who I talk to usually gets into it when they're doing kind of like indie games or starting off with fan games is they'll go to like Spriders resource or some other website where they can pull uh, the graphics from a Game Boy game or a SNES game. And they'll use those in their game, but like they'll need something slightly different. Like, oh, I need this door to be an archway. Let me figure out how to do that. So then you'll be put it in your game and you'll have like, oh, it's the really nice graphics that Nintendo made. Plus this hideous archway that's weird and contorted. (laughs) Uh, But you just keep doing that for for long enough and you eventually start to catch on to some of the fundamentals. I mean, it's like any other kind of art like you. You do studies, you look at what other people have done and how they did it dissect that and then apply that to what you're doing start making changes until you eventually internalize it so uh it's not something i've been doing consistently but i started probably 15 years ago or nice 20 years it, <laughs> yeah. it looks great i'm a sucker for pixel art like if i'm scrolling through the steam store or this uh the switch and i see a, a game that has pixel art i at least stop like that yes, i stop and i look Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and just look and see if it's something I'd be interested in just because I find it so appealing. Um, and it's probably because I'm an old man, but I <laughs> yeah. just, I just went, I just, I'm a sucker for great pixel art. And, and this game looks so appealing. There's a screenshot uh, the, on the Steam page, which is like this little lagoon and the waterfall coming to, and it just, it tickles my heart and it makes me a kid again. And oh, sure. I love it. Well, thanks. <laughs> um, now, Scott, how long do you think it took you to finish? Uh, the game, I would the say, game. It, oh, <laughs> I would say that uh, the actual storyline. Had I done that straight through, I think it probably would have been about two hours. Two, and is that sound about right, Max? Or did he cheat? He sounds speedy as f- cheater, <laughs> cheater. Like, I think I, um, I think when I, you know, I had to do tons of testing, obviously, I think I could, knowing exactly where to go and do everything, if I tried to just plow through just the, just the necessary things, I could maybe get it done in like an hour, 10, an hour and a half. Uh, I think, yeah, the, I mean, that's the just the necessary right things now, that I'm like, you're not thinking far of. off the speed run record, which I think is like 50 something minutes. Oh, Scott, speed run it, buddy. <laughs> Well, see, I don't, I don't know the game well enough yet for that. But I mean, I'm saying as far as like just the regular, the actual quest that were for the main storyline. You're it, subtracting if, what you think you spent on side yes. quest. Yeah, yeah. What, I, I'm, what do you I, think? I'm subtracting how much time what you put it in the took game? me. Well, oh, how much time did I actually put in the game? Yes. Um, I probably put in 
I would say probably about 10 or 15 hours because okay. I was doing <laughs> I made too about many an quests. hour a day for the last two. <laughs> I don't yeah. think so. Because <laughs> no, no, it wasn't even that. It was the fact that I got so lost at first because I was looking for one of the ports and I couldn't figure out how to get there. And it was just like, it was, I had to get to that port to talk to the friend that had been taken away mm-hmm. because she had been seen in that port. But like, by the time I finally got there, it was quite a while. Like, a, it was l- ridiculously long as far as me, like just walking around and like finding, oh, here's a heart here. Oh, here's this uh, little mini dungeon here. Oh, I think yeah. I can blow up that wall right there and make a cave and go in there. Oh, look, there's a, a bear spirit that I have to kill. <laughs> you know, just stuff like that. Excellent. Well, I mean, and that's kind of the point. Um, I, I feel like that's what I, re- what I really like in games, at least, is if someone, if I know I need to go somewhere, I love getting lost on the way and finding mm-hmm. cool stuff, you know, like that I, I feel like I'm not intended to get Oh, and you. that's exactly what happened, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like in Skyrim when you find a, you're, oh, I got to go do a quest and you find a cave and then you go in there and, you find something else, you know, and you'd never actually get to what you're supposed to be doing. I think that's a that's a good thing. Oh yeah, exactly. I think the uh, and I guess lastly, mm-hmm. a, as a part of doing everything, um, what's your background in music and developing the music for this game? Oh, it's just something I've been doing for fun. I think I I started playing like bass guitar in fifth grade or so, and just. I've been steadily picking up instruments since then and producing songs. Um, I mean, I do the I do audio engineering at my church. So over the past couple of years doing that, it's given me uh, a lot of fun practicing mixing, mostly voices. We don't do uh, super involved music there, but produced a few friends records and stuff like that. So that's just another hobby that I like doing. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. So Max has done the art, the music. The sound effects, the soundtrack, uh, just about everything you can. So it's it's definitely a a piece of art from Max that you can definitely check out. Now, uh, Scott, you want to lead us into the finale of the show? Well, so we, I wanted to say that this is uh, fourteen ninety nine on Steam as well as the Switch. Um, I know it goes on sale quite a bit on this, on Steam, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know yeah. if your developer has gotten any of the sales on the Switch yet. Um, yeah, I, th- I mean, it just came out last month. Or not developer, sorry, publisher. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I figured that's what you meant. Yeah, uh, it's it's not even been on the Switch store a month yet, so um, I'm sure some will be coming up. But I don't, <laughs> I don't keep track of that. I already have the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Max, what oh, what ahead. what is? Do you plan to to stick with the the art style of this game is like your next uh, offering, and where do you see the your next game going from here? So I think there's definitely a lot more in this this particular kind of space that I'd love to explore. Um, you know, with this sort of style of pixel art where it's uh cartoony and well-defined um and in the top down desert's heart (laughs) yeah but do like doing that to like basically zelda likes like the the top-down action rpg there's so many different kinds of mechanics that you can twist and change around and focus on one thing over another um that i think it's still a really fun place to explore like i'd mentioned earlier like this is being my first game this was very focused on the basics, you know, things that I knew would be reliable. Like, mm-hmm. okay, I know shooting a bow and arrow is fun. Um, so for one of those little follow-up projects that we had talked about uh, later, one of them was called Hollow's Eve, and it's uh, you play as a a pumpkin man who has come from the Halloween land on uh, Halloween when he can cross the he can cross the barrier between dimensions because he wanted to rent Jurassic Park from Blockbuster. Oh uh, God, so this is nightmare Jeff before Christmas. All over it. <laughs> <laughs> But so that one I wanted to explore a little bit uh, more of like being dodgier and throwing out uh, like a a more faster paced combat where you're throwing out ranged attacks and you've got to like be on your heels um, and then something a little bit more linear and less open. Um, And I feel like that had a 
you know, it was, it's a very small project. It was, I spent like, um, I think the month of October just about on it. Um, so it's definitely not as full, as fully fleshed out as Ocean's Heart is, but I think it had a very different vibe just from me changing a couple small variables in the, in the design. So going forward, I want to keep doing things like that. Like, um, going maybe more into the nitty gritty RPG aspects that FromSoft does with their like, oh, wow, you can have different, you know, sort of spec your character out to be more of a spellcaster or more focused on melee weapons. Or, you know, maybe do a game that's contrary to uh, sort of the other end of that, where it's within the bounds of this sort of genre, like, okay, this is really just focused on uh, so, uh, on throwing your sword and summoning it back to you or something like that. So exploring those kinds of things is uh, within the bounds of Zelda likes is like what I think I'm going to do for at least a few more games. Judgment. So at the end of each episode, we decide whether the game deserves our seal or not and requires a two third vote to be approved or denied. Max, Jeff, what do you, what do you say? say? Do you like this game? <laughs> well, for your seal, like a sea lion seal, do they have thumbs? Not going to be able to play it. Eh, I vote no. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's up? Oh yeah, th- this is great. I mean, if y- if you like Zelda likes, you're on board, and I think it's well made, and it's that. And, I mean, one of the things that like um, Stardew Valley, the charm of it. I just was amazed. One guy did this, and now <laughs> here's another one. One guy did everything you see here. Okay, but even Amazing. I think the Stardew Valley guy is kind of extra about it. Like he went overboard. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> anyway, yeah, his updates I, are all a little overboard. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 won't come after you, I don't think, maybe. Anyway, but yeah, it definitely gets right. So I think you're gonna you're gonna have a good time playing it, especially if if you're like me and you like pixel art and you like playing games that remind you of sitting in front of a tube TV with your Sega Genesis or your Super Nintendo. Uh you'll be right at home. Mark, how about yourself? Yeah, so not everybody listening to this podcast is old like Jeff, uh, <laughs> but I do believe that this game blends the exploration aspect and the difficulty aspect in a a well told story, and so yeah, it gets my seal because it does all these things, but it doesn't quite bash you over the head with any one one particular bit of the game, and so. For the for the price that you're gonna pay for it, you're gonna get your money's worth, and uh, yeah, it gets my seal. Mark has more gray hair than me. Go That's ahead, not true. Scott. That's not true. At it all. is totally true. That's because he's got a more stressful job. Come That's on, true. That that is that true. might be true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that is true. But <laughs> that might be true. But I don't know, man. Sometimes while <laughs> Bro, I'm doing all you, the interviews, you're at the house. Things all, get hairy all day. All right, <laughs> get get out of here. <laughs> This game is going to receive my seal. It, I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun to play it. I was a big my my probably my favorite SNES game is has to be a link to the past next to Metroid. But yeah, this it gives me that vibe. It's it feels very good. The exploration was very nice because even though I was completely lost as far as the main story went. I was finding other stuff. I was like, oh, well, here's a side quest. I'll do this because I think I know where this is at. Oh, and this here and this here. Oh, yeah. So, yes, it will definitely get my seal. So this is unanimously budget arcade approved. Now, Scott, I don't know how much of this story is true or not. So you're going to have to verify. But our late friend Aaron played at one of the Zeldas. It had to be like Link to the Past probably. Wait, are, are they dead? Yes. Yes. He oh, passed shit. away. He passed away um, from colon damn. cancer. <laughs> Uh, okay. What sorry did you about that. Think wait, you wait, chime in, Mark. No, I did. What else could <laughs> that, that was admit, that was Mark? unexpected on my part. I did not. Have, well, anyway, I, nobody but, told me that was getting brought up. He so told I, me, <laughs> "Damn, bro, you're so cold-hearted." <laughs> when Scott was younger at his house, that he deleted his save file so Scott could just start a new one. Does that sound familiar, Scott? On what game? It was a Zelda game. I don't know which one. Link to the Past, maybe? That would not be accurate because there's usually like three save files well, that you can do. Well, that's what I mean. He probably had all three. Well, did you remember any game where you deleted one of his save files? 
where I deleted one of his yeah. save files. You maniac. I mean, it, uh, it's quite possible. I was kind of, of a jerk you back would. then. You're that type of guy. I well, mean, I did play, uh, what was it? Um, yes, I know. I, um, that Chrono Cross sequel. No, no, no. It was uh, uh, Secret of Evermore. Secret of Evermore. Yeah. You, sorry, Joker. All right, Max. Um, <laughs> where can people find you? We already said you can find Ocean's Heart on Steam and the Nintendo eShop. Uh, where else can people find you if they want to learn more? Your Itch.io page, as yeah. I call it. Yeah. If you're itching for games. Uh, 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 um, yeah. No, you can follow <laughs> hey! me on Twitter. Uh, I'm at 11 Mirage. Uh, which is the number it's the number one twice uh and then Ooh. if you want to whoa go to my that's games, that's uh, <laughs> revolutionary if you uh my games are on itch if you look for max trillionator um dot itch dot io or just google me i mean yeah that's what i would have those links in the description right scott <laughs> uh sure yeah i could do that yeah you better thank you scott <laughs> <laughs> We can. You can also be found on the uh, Gaming Nexus podcast too. Correct. Yes, I tell you. So the other week, I was like, I feel like we haven't. Do we record this week? And we haven't recorded in like a month. Uh, I actually was not sure what's going on with that. Ooh, you hear it? Here, you here, can find him formally tales, on the right. Gaming right, Nexus podcast. Okay, well, guess what? If you want to get in touch with us, you can do so at <laughs> facebook.com slash budget arcade. Don't forget to check out Twitter and Instagram at Budget Arcade, as well as TikTok and Twitch.tv. That's at Budget Arcade Podcast. If you want to help support the show, you can do so on our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Budget Arcade. You can also get one of our t-shirts by the sh- link in the show notes. Hashtag we Freemark. Have, uh, hashtag Freemark. We have the um, Ubi sauce. sauce. <laughs> Save it for the seal. What's the other one? I don't know. We have a fourth one. I can't remember the, what's on the back of that one. Oh, well. Yeah. But if you do join our Patreon, you will get exclusive access to our Discord channel for our Patreon sub- subscribers. And you can join our Discord from the link in our show notes. Our music is provided by Stimage, and you can download his music at MetroidMetal.com. And game on. Power Penny days are back, just in time for spring at JCPenney. Stock up on wardrobe staples to home essentials, like teas for the family, select styles starting at $7. Soak up the savings with $5 home expressions, quick-dry bath towels, and an array of colors. Or use your coupon to save an extra 25% store-wide. Incredible prices, spectacular savings. Hurry, and Sunday. JCPenney. Offers and coupon valid 324 to 327. Some exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Power Penny deals excluded from coupon. 